السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأولين والآخرين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد Dear brothers and sisters worldwide welcome to another edition of your program Ask Huda uh, the phone numbers are as usual, area code 002 and the email address is ask at huda.tv. Barakallahu feekum. We just have a couple of pending questions and we'll be more than happy to take your valuable questions and concerns, inshallah, as soon as you start calling in. Um, Brother Isa from Nigeria last time said, at what point should we begin to make taslim? after the Imam completes his taslim or at the same time as the Imam. In the hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إِنَّمَا جُعِلَ الْإِمَامُ لِيُؤْتَمَّ بِهِ فَإِذَا كَبَّرَ الْإِمَامُ فَكَبِّرُوا Al Imam is appointed in the Sharia to be followed and Al Ma'mumin are the followers and it is not permissible for the followers to uh, go ahead or proceed the Imam. So once the Imam makes takbir, now you can succeed him, you can follow him. Once the Imam makes ruku', now you make ruku', rises from ruku', and so on. And the Prophet ﷺ threatened those who rise their heads before the Imam, either from ruku' or sujood. And the proper way and what's recommended is to wait until the Imam finishes both taslim to the right, then to the left, then the follower should start his or her taslim afterward. Uh, some of the Imams said that if the follower followed the Imam after the first taslim, because this is the fard taslim, the first one, so if the Imam makes Assalamu Alaikum to the right, then the follower says Assalamu Alaikum and he waits. So the Imam turns to the left side and he says Assalamu Alaikum wa rahmatullah. The Imam follows him and makes taslim. They said, لا بأس بذلك. There is no harm, but it is not recommended. It is not recommended. The recommended way is to wait until the Imam finishes the prayer entirely. Then you follow the Imam in making taslim. And of course, there is no rush. Because after the prayer, you're going to sit and make khitam salah the supplications, invocations after the prayer. So why is the rush? Why are you so keen to finish the salah before the Imam? You're not going to go anywhere before the Imam finishes the prayer anyway. Zakumullah uh, khairan. Sister Umm Abdul Rahman from Nigeria last time inquired about forensic uh, medicine. I was about to say evidence because this is what's normally used for. This is a, a, a branch of medicine which is a study and the application of the medical knowledge in the legal field in the legal field there are some cases which are called medical legal these cases pertaining death rape paternity and so on requires medical evidence to verify uh, the, the proof uh, for instance some people get killed or died through the forensic medicine the physicians get to do autopsy to figure out whether this person had been poisoned, uh, suffocated, or killed by whatever means. So it is permissible to learn this science or this branch of medicine. It is definitely needed. And it's not only limited to autopsy, it's also extended to paternity, the DNA tests to prove the nasab, the family lineage, and things of this nature. So it is permissible. But the question could be, much more specifically directed to the autopsy. When is it permissible? Because is it just simply because somebody believes or thinks, I have suspicion that this person may have been killed or whatever. So I require uh, forensic uh, evidence or autopsy, even if the person uh, does not seem to be uh, killed or went through a murder. No, in this case, we have to keep in mind that the Prophet ﷺ said, the sacredness of a believer 
while he's dead is the same as if he's still alive. Even breaking the bones of a dead Muslim is the same as breaking the bone of the person when he's still alive. So it will be permissible in very narrow conditions where it is definitely needed to verify whether this person has been killed or not or the cause of death. When there is a great doubt there has been a murder or suspicion of a murder behind this case. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Our first caller, Sister Aisha from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, Shaykh? I'm fine, alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking, Sister Aisha. <laughs> Our pleasure. Uh, and Shaykh, you know when you're making salat and afterwards you notice that your hair might not have been covered properly or a bit of skin was exposed, do I have to um, pray again? I'm sorry, I didn't get the question. If you can uh, slow down, raise your voice. Ah, uh, you know, I'm after I've finished praying, and uh, I noticed that some of my hair may not have been covered properly. You know, it might have fallen out, or a bit of skin. You know, maybe from my ankle was showing. Do I have to pray again? No, you you won't have to pray again. That if the person does that deliberately or he was aware that a part of his aura was uncovered. But if the person was in the prayer and he figured out a part of her hair or the ankle or whatever was uncovered, so you cover it up, that's fine. Also the Prophet ﷺ in the prayer was wearing his boots. Then all of a sudden he took them off and kicked them away. So the companions followed him. After the prayer, the Prophet ﷺ notes that the, the companions have taken their shoes and boots off. He said, why did you do that? They said, we've seen you doing that. So the thought has been abrogated that we should not be praying in our shoes or boots. The Prophet ﷺ said, no, it's rather Jibreel ﷺ came to me and informed me that my boots had some impurities and najasa, so I had to take them off and he resumed the prayer. He did not interrupt his prayer. Thank you, Aisha, from the case. Jazakallahu khairan. And of course, since as-salah is the most important ibadah and act of worship in Islam, the person has to be prepared for it, has to be prepared physically and spiritually. So before praying, you choose a nice spot away from any distraction. You make sure you have the proper tahara, dressed up in the proper uh, outfit that it does not show uh, the, the awra in the prayer which may invalidate the prayer. Unfortunately, uh, while on the other hand we see some sisters are very keen to cover even a few hair going from here and there, we see a lot of youth in the masajid today. Those who like to wear those jeans, tight jeans and local jeans. And when they make ruku'ah and when they make sujood, their awra will be showing. So this person and these persons, we would like to once again, remind them, please make sure that you wear proper clothes upon going to pray. You should be wearing proper and dress up proper in any case and all the time, but more specifically during the salah. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother Ahmed from Nigeria, assalamu alaikum. Okay, we lost the call. Please try again, Ahmed. Uh, the second uh, question from the previous, the third question from the previous episode, Sister Munira from United Arab Emirates. She said, can I give my zakat to my poor brother? Yes, if he is poor and eligible, then of course you can give him uh, your zakat, especially when you have kids, so he's not uh, officially one of your ears. You don't have to support him financially. Uh, his financial expenses are not due upon you. So in this case, you can give him out of your zakah and inshallah, hopefully you get double reward. The reward of giving in a charity and the reward of upholding the ties of kinship and giving those who are closer and nearer to you. Do you have to inform him beforehand that this is zakah? Please, you don't have to do that. A lot of people are being misinformed in this regard. They think that when I give the zakah, I have to tell the recipient that this is zakah. 
or this is a kafara or whatever. No, especially some people uh, who are uh, very respected people, but they're going through financial adversity. It hurts their feeling to tell them that this is zakah. It's like the killing that you are a poor person and you deserve to take uh, a zakah, which is the leftover uh, from my wealth. Um, we have Sister Sumaya from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Ask Wada. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, Sheikh? I'm fine, alhamdulillah. Thank you, Sister Sumaya. Yeah, Sheikh, actually, I have one personal question. So, is there any way I can ask you? Yes, go ahead, please. Uh, no, on, online right now? You prefer me to? What, what kind of question do you have? Uh, regarding marriage. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, actually, Sheikh, uh, uh, I had a commitment with one guy, and now his father is, you know, he's saying. He wanted him to his to his uh, his son to marry with his cousin. I see. And I, I, only because of this problem, he's just refusing me, and I don't know what to do. Whether so, some people are saying so, me go so, ahead so and get person, married with him, or just leave him. I don't know what to do. So that person has already made up his mind. He said he's refused you, right? Yeah. Okay. Then drop it. His father, his father refused me, I not know. him. I know, you're not supposed to chase the guy after he said, uh, I'm not interested or I'm going to follow my father's instructions. No, uh, Sheikh, he's not saying such. His father is saying. He's, he, he's asking me. I perfectly understand. He said he refused you because of his father. So he made up his mind. If he did not make up his mind and he was asking or you were asking on his behalf, then the answer will be as follows. That, of course, obeying the parents is a must. And it is right after the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But do I have to marry the girl whom my parents chose for me? No. Same thing to you. So, basically, if the groom or if the bride are righteous people, alhamdulillah, shukla, and this is my choice, I need to work on convincing my parents so that they would bless this marriage. But the agreement of his father to marry a righteous Muslim is not a condition. But it is required in order to be blessed, in order to please his father. But this is not the end of life. But if the person already has made up his mind and said, uh, I refuse you, or he changed his mind, then there is really not much that you can do. If he is very much interested in you, then we can discuss the case. Any other questions, Sumaya? Okay, Barakallahu Fiq. Brother Azmi from United Arab Emirates. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sheikh, I have two questions, but uh, mistakenly I told them I have only one. Is it okay to ask two questions? You have? Two questions. Two questions. Okay, bring on the first one, please. Okay, first thing, Sheikh, that taking bath, is it considered as ablution before the prayer? And my second question is, I frequent traveler between two cities, which is the distance of about 136 kilometers. Okay, what was I the allow, second question I allowed to Can do the prayers joint. Can you start the second question over, please? Sorry, Sheikh? Repeat the second question from the beginning, please. I frequently drive between two cities, which is 136 kilometers distance. Mm -hmm. So do I allow to pray joint prayers? Yes, Although you are. Although there's enough mosque between these two cities. Okay. So okay. can I pray jointly? Okay. That's okay. Okay. Thank you. Brother Ridwan from United Arab Emirates. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, Brother Ridwan? Alhamdulillah, Sheikh. How are you? Thank you for asking. I'm fine, Alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking. Alhamdulillah. Too. Finally, I got through you after a lot of times uh, repetitive calls. How things with you, Sheikh? Alhamdulillah. Wonderful. Jazakallah. Very good. Alhamdulillah. Glad to hear that. Sheikh, today you'll have to bear with me, please. I have two questions, and one is pretty long, and none of them are related. Inshallah, will you be able to help me? If you can compress the questions, that would be great for the sake of time, please. Inshallah, okay. Sheikh, my first question is, uh, with regards to the, uh, the Qur'an, 
what we have now is like in what uh, who set the order uh, in the right order which we read the Quran now because I know that uh, the Quran was not revealed at once rather it was by verse by verse and surah at times so who put the old surahs in this order that we read I hope you got my uh, I got your question, question. Sheikh. yes I got it okay Sheikh. and my second question is Sheikh, uh, it is quite personal uh, inshallah, I'm trying to get married soon, within this year, inshallah. My one question is, uh, Sheikh, there is this uh, uh, sister that in Islam who I would love to get married to. But uh, there's a small problem that her uh, father, who is a very righteous person, mashallah, he has one condition, that he would not give his daughter's hands to anyone who does not share his nationality. And obviously, yeah, I don't share his nationality. Hmm. So what do you advise, Sheikh, in this case? And inshallah, this is, I'm just being just. I'm not twisting my question so that I'm making you do hmm. answer in my favor. Inshallah, I'll accept what Islam has for me. Okay. Zakallah khair. And trust me, we will not work hard to give an answer to suit your desire. Rather, we'll give the answer which we believe it presents the deen. Wallahu a'lam. Brother Muhammad from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Muhammad. Yes, sir. Good evening. And, Good uh, evening Allah to you. Allah subhanahu wa bless you and the whole Buddha team. Amen. Yes, sir. I have one question, and it has been disturbing for some time now. Uh, now you have a situation of following all this online, you know, Facebook, Twitter, communication. And in this process, you meet some people that are posting negative things about Islam, especially the non-Muslims. Mm. And then sometimes you try to tell them that this is the real Islam. That is not the real Islam. You try to give them, you know, the real Islam, but they are not even ready to understand. Sometimes they even uh, retort with bad, you know, uh, messages to you, try to tell you bad things about Islam and all this. And it really affects me. I try to put them in the good information aspect, but they don't even want to listen. In such a situation, do you insist in giving them the right information, or you just leave them and you just don't care? I mean, I don't know. Do we have that responsibility to insist on giving them the right information, even if uh, it affects ca you? Can I summarize your question? You're asking about giving da'wah online. Am I right? Exactly, yes. Exactly. Okay. Something like that. And even if it is paining you, it will just continue to impact. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Muhammad from Nigeria. Barakallahu feekum. Abu Ahmed from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam, ya Sheikh. How are you, Abu uh, Ahmed? Fine, Mr. Sheikh. Uh, my question is, uh, uh, I have uh, some children. Uh, is it necessary that she, your your so your child has to reach seven years old before you ask him or her to pray? And uh, what happened is my youngest daughter, who uh, is not she is not up to seven years, but uh, very intelligent. She has she memorized more chapters of the Quran than her uh, elder sisters. Uh, but I don't even I don't tell her to pray because I just want to uh, wait till she reach uh, seven years. But uh, she recites even better than those elder sisters. Uh, uh. I guess uh, your your question, Abu Ahmed. Thank you, Sister Hafsa from United Arab Emirates. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Um, wow. I have three questions. Please. Um, if a person begins his part salah, not knowing that the jama'ah was over, and on hearing the imam start the jama'ah, he breaks the salah by saying salam, uh, will this be right? If not, what shall be done now? Um, and my second question, is it permissible to donate organs during life and after death? And uh, can we donate blood? Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Uh, no, thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Hafsa from United Arab Emirates. Thank you. Jazakumullah khairan. 
okay uh, but there is from United Arab Emirates uh, about taking a shower and making wudu simultaneously